Check out our new ebook, Explorations of Rum, at homecocktailmenu.com slash shop. Welcome to Comment Cocktails. I'm your host, Derek Schomer. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about how I try to avoid the inevitable situation of the hangover. So first, a little backstory. Among my friends, and even those who've probably gone out drinking with me, Kyle, um, some of the fans from, uh, that we met at in New Orleans at Tales of the Cocktail, is I'm fairly good at not getting drunk. It's a general rule. Uh, that doesn't mean I have not got tipsy or whatever or lapses of judgment here and there, but there's a way I go about doing it. The first thing I do is I avoid cheaper alcohols. So maybe a few less shots of some cheap alcohol when somebody goes to the bar like, let's do shots of Cuervo Gold. Bad idea. So I avoid that in general. Doesn't mean I haven't done a shot here and there. There's always those inevitable fireball shots. Sure, whatever you're paying. But in general, Stick to a higher grade of spirit. So for that, instead of using a Jose Cuervo Gold, use the Tradicional. You can use the Silver Jose Cuervo. You can go to a different brand, 100% de agave. If you're working with vodkas and stuff, the higher grade ones are, are probably going to be better. Uh, but in general, I, there's not a lot of really crap vodka out there. It's, it's, people have been pretty reasonable. The next thing I do is the double cocktail rule. Two cocktails in an hour, no more. Really, one is good. Two is slightly excessive, but... Let's be honest, it happens. So, you know, you start the night, I might have a whiskey sour or whatever, or maybe a pisco sour. More than likely, I'm gonna have another one. The way I can keep it to two instead of going three, four, five, six, is I nurse it for a little bit. I don't care what it is, if it's in a, a Nick Nor, if it's in a whatever type of glass or a low ball, I, I will drink it at a slower pace and enjoy it the entire time. That enjoyment factor is really why I'm drinking cocktails to begin with, so it helps out, I enjoy it, I drink less of them, but I enjoy the ones I'm having, thus I'm not putting so much alcohol into my system. The next thing I do, and I suggest you do the same, is I usually will have one to two bottles of water in an hour period during a drinking session. Um, and there's multiple ways I could do this. Sometimes I just get away with it. But you know sometimes you've got your buddies and they're like, I can't believe you're being a pussy, you drink water, why are you drink water, you just blah, blah, blah. You can try to hide or mask the water. There's a couple ways I go about doing this. In having a past life in sales, this became a regular practice. Is if you are at a bar, the first thing you do is you can you ask for water with your beers or whatever you're drinking. So I'm always like, oh, can I have a, a red hook and, and, a, and a glass of water? Uh, can I get two glasses of ice water and a whiskey sour? And while I'm at the bar, I'll consume those glasses of water fairly quickly. And then I'll go to the whiskey sour and I'll nurse that for a while. People are always wondering, how about you pee a lot when you're drinking? Like, I'm always in the bathroom going back and forth because I'm hydrating the crap out of myself and you just don't know because you're so busy being blind, drinking your beers and talking about how you're getting drunk while I'm doing the smart thing. But I'm doing it in a subtle way. The other way I handle this is you can put in a tiki glass. Is this a kind of a shill for us at drinks.com where you get the Mr. Fugu tiki mug? Of course it is. But at the same point, what this allows you to do is hide it so they can't tell what you're drinking. You throw some pineapple juice in there. What's the difference between pineapple juice and a tiki? You can't tell. It's kind of an orangey color. And you drink that. What you're really doing in that case is you're getting some water from the pineapple juice. You're getting no additional sugars added if it's like a dole or whatever. But you're still getting some natural sugar. You're getting some vitamins, which are actually essential to avoiding the hangover, which is what a lot of these hangover remedies are full of, is vitamins and essential product, nutrients, potassiums, and stuff that your body needs to avoid the hangover. So you can always take this route, but I suggest a little hybrid approach. Have a couple uh, glass of juice or whatever. But if you're at the bar, that's harder to do. So the easiest thing to do is ask the bartender for uh, tonic and lime, or seltzer water and lime. The bartender's not going to consider you a... a an idiot because you're trying to hydrate yourself. It's the bartender's job not to get somebody excessively drunk and cause an accident, uh, murders, everything that can kind of go around uh, DW, uh, DUIs, things that are bad that can happen. Bartenders probably will give you no crap for drinking in moderation and, and having water and alcohol at the same time. Just leave them a good tip. They're not going to care. Lastly, something I started last year more than prior, but I, I, I wish I was doing this earlier, is fitness. So summer's always a little bit more difficult with the kids at home and, and the whole seasonality and, and taking vacation time and whatnot. Mondays is a leg workout. Tuesdays is cardio kickboxing. Wednesdays, chest workout. Thursdays, cardio kickboxing. Friday, I take it off, because I also film the show. Saturday morning, if I can get my ass out of bed, 
I do another kickboxing cardio thing. If not, I'll usually swim laps during the summer and, and, and to keep myself going. Usually 24 laps um, around the pool at my, at my buddy Don's parents' house. Anything to kind of build muscle mass because if you've watched a past video, what you'll know is that lean muscle absorbs the alcohol where fat pushes it away and leaves it in your bloodstream and you, you get drunk and it's, you know how that all works. So some level of fitness is helpful in order to consume alcohol a little bit quicker without the same effect. Moderation is key. I like to nurse my drinks. I like to drink water in between. I usually end the night with at least eight to 16 ounces of water. Typically, if I know it's going to be, if it was a long drinking session over a long period of time, and I take off a couple hours of drinking near the end, a couple painkillers before bed, um, just be very careful because painkillers work on the same digestive system as your alcohol. So if you have a lot of alcohol and your liver is screaming to death and then you hit it with painkillers, which makes your liver scream to death, it's, it's kind of like one of those cocktails of doom. So again, moderation. Taper off your alcohol before bed. This is what I do. And then, you know, have a couple of these couple painkillers if you know you've had a long session. What I have learned is you do not have to be drunk to get that hangover the next day. If you do 8 to 16 hours of drinking in one whole session for a weekend and you're like, I'm not drunk, you go to bed and you're like, oh, I still don't feel so good in the morning. It's it's a long-term thing. So you, you, moderation in short periods of time is probably best. But that's how I usually go about not getting too, too much destroyed without hangovers because there's a few things I don't like about hangovers. They suck. Uh, but uh, an excessive amount of alcohol makes me tired, and when I'm tired, I'm not really in the mood to party. So I, it's really all about balancing having fun with alcohol, and you don't necessarily need them. Mocktails, if you order those at the restaurants, uh, those work as well. Anything to, to kind of just give your body a break, relax, and digest what is currently consumed. That is that is my cocktail for a solution of not getting yourself drunk. That's why you'll never see an episode of Common Man Cocktails in which I am drunk because I don't really find it's very professional for what we do here and we try and ex really excel on taste profiles and flavors and the experience around the spirits, not really the end result of doing too much drinking. Does it happen? Not on the set, but yeah. Sometimes you drink a little too much doing some taste tests or you're doing long, uh, reviews or something like that or whatnot you've got to you've got to break yourself in between that's it my friends we're teaching you how to drink without the headache but one of the bigger culprits that people don't really recognize are congeners and congeners are those little toxins that can be found in a distilled spirit and a fermented spirit usually from fermentation down into distillation methanol acetone esters